What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I'm back with another idiotic video for you to watch. Today, I'm here to tell you that I pre-ordered a Fujifilm X-T4, and no, that does not mean that I am switching to Fuji from my Sony Alpha fanboy lineup. I am simply going to try to use the Fujifilm system as well with my Sony gear. And why did I do this? It is because Sony has not done anything with the video specs for their cameras for the past 30 years. So I wanted in 2020 to begin filming with the ability to use 4K60 10-bit. Sony does not offer that. And as some of you may know, I shoot a ton of weddings every year and wedding season starts heavily in May. And at this point, if I don't do something, try a different system, I will not shoot 4K 60 10 bit at all this year. Uh, and you know, let's say Sony does release something in May, you know, NAB or August, you know, once I pre-order and by the time I get the camera in my hands, it's probably already November. So, you know, by that time, Wedding season is over with, and I have shot every wedding in my old school 4K, 24, 1080, 60p, 100 megabit per second in good old Sony 8-bit. What am I filming with right now? I am actually filming with a Fujifilm X-T3 because I will not have a Fujifilm X-T4 until like sometime after April 30th when it finally shipped. I pre-ordered it at like midnight the day it was announced a few days ago. Um, and obviously I'm not a big time YouTuber. I'm actually a piece of trash tube douche a-hole uh, out here on these cold Maryland streets. And Fuji is not gonna send me X-T4 to look at. So I bought a pre-owned Fujifilm X-T3 as well as a 16 millimeter F1.4, 23 millimeter F1.4, 35 millimeter F1.4, and 56 millimeter f1.2 fujifilm lenses to get acclimated with for the next couple of months and why did i not rent a fuji uh, xt3 instead of buying one because when you rent something let's say it's like 100 200 a week you only have for a week and i need to really work with the camera for a long period of time in my case at least two to three months before the fuji xt4 comes out so i have like almost mastered the camera before I actually shoot things for clients because the last thing I want to do is fumble around trying to figure out how this camera works on like a day of a wedding. Uh, you know, with Sony, I completely mastered, you know, to my liking, I mastered the Sony cameras for the past five years. You know, like I, I, I'm truly, people would call me a Sony fanboys because I started on Sony back in 2014 when I bought a, a, a Sony Alpha Next 6 and then I went to Alpha 6000 6300, 6500, uh, A7S2, A7R3, A7III, A6600. I've owned like pretty much all Sony Alpha cameras and I still own uh, and I'm keeping them, like I said, but I will be selling off probably a couple of bodies uh, to make room for the Fuji bodies. Meanwhile, still keeping the Sony. Again, I'm keeping it. You know, a lot of you Sony fanboys out there are crazy. Start calling me names and stuff on the Facebook forums, you know, talking about, oh, you know, you need full frame, you know, there's no APS-C, like, that's literally the only argument you have for the Sony systems. You have the a7 III and it has full frame, there's only APS-C, but the reality is the main benefit of full frame is dynamic range for photography. It doesn't really affect the same dynamic range for video, and yes, APS-C does have its weaknesses in terms of like, you know, you don't have like a true 35 millimeter f1.4. Uh, you know, like the, the, what I'm using right now is a 23 millimeter f1.4. It's, you know, it's pretty much with the crop factor put in is a 35 mil uh, f2.1 ish. Um, and, you know, you just, in the wider end of the spectrum of lenses, focal lengths, you don't get the same width with the same type of aperture or, uh, depth of field or what have you uh, as you would full frame and also you don't have like you know an equivalent 2470 
uh, f2.8 as you would on a full frame. I mean, you do have a 16 to 55 f2.8, but once you factor in the crop factor, that is 2470, but it's more like a 2470 f4.2 with the crop, crop factor factored in. So you don't really have this true 24 to 70 focal length f2.8 versatility. And you know, for me, when I want to do like this cinematic crap or uh, the filmic look, you know, f2.8 is probably as like uh, slow as I'd go with aperture, um, you know, to get the look that I want. And so with APS-C, you're kind of limited to shooting with primes. In my case, that's why I ordered 16, 23, 35, and 56 millimeter primes to be able to get the look that I want. So yeah, right now I'm actually filming, again, Fuji X-T3. Uh, you know, it has full autofocus. I don't even know if I'm in focus right now. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video or not. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm shooting an F-log, and I think, you know, when I get back, and I'm gonna grade it, I'll probably grade it with just the external, uh, the Fujifilm, um, Fujifilm external LUT. So I'm still trying to learn all these picture profiles and all that stuff to learn how to use this camera properly. And I don't know if this is, you know, doing good focus. It's pretty challenging with all the lighting and stuff. I don't even have ND filter on right now. So like, I'm just using the shutter. I'm just cranking it up uh, to get correct exposure with at f1.4. I mean, it's not a big deal um, for this kind of thing. Yeah, so the next couple months, I'll be doing a full test of all this. And I know the X-T3 is not the same as the X-T4, but hey, look, like, the image is the same, the video specs are the same, so, and the autofocus is not as good, so if this autofocus works, that means X-T4 would be great. Doesn't have IBIS, but the whole thing is me just getting acclimated to the system, so when X-T4 is in my hands, I'm already used to using Fuji and it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be testing a lot of stuff. I'm gonna testing image quality, dynamic range, color grading, how the color holds up, uh, I can tell you right now already based on the tests that I've done uh, with 4K 60 um, 10 bit as well as uh, 4K 24 10 bit uh, 420 internal at 400 megabits per second. Already the colors that I could get out of the XC3, the, the amount I could push it, I, it's already better than the Sony. Okay? You just can't get away from that. Uh, there's just more color data. Um, I did some tests with some RGB lighting and where Sony struggles, started like breaking up, have artifacting. The Fuji X-T3 had no problem. And you know, I'll def definitely demonstrate that uh, for you and show examples, you know, in later YouTube videos. But uh, anyways, guys, like this is, you know, I gotta make sure I get a nice clip of the camera before people start saying that I'm not filming on the right thing. So anyways, guys, uh, hey, let me know what you think of how this footage looks. Uh, let me know what your plans are. I know a lot of you uh, guys who subscribe to me are Sony shooters. So let me know what your plans are. Are you going, are you thinking about going this route? Are you thinking about looking at X-T3? Uh, in that case, you're probably in the same boat as me. Or I mean, I'm sorry, you're looking to go to X-T4. In that case, you're on the same boat as me. You're trying to figure out how this works. You know, does the autofocus live up to, you know, what the Sony system does? Is it good enough? All those things, so that's literally what I'm gonna be doing the next couple months, uh, is just trying to see if this is gonna work for me and I wanna give it a legit shot, not just rent it or not just borrow it from somebody for a couple days and you know just do a quick thing. I really want to get in depth, get used to it. Already I can tell you the A7III's ergonomics, I prefer it more, I prefer everything about it in terms of the body and like how you use controls and everything because mainly that's all I've shot with my whole, my whole entire videography, uh, photography life. So this is only like the, literally the second system I've ever act, dove or gonna to try to dive into try diff, trying something different. So of course, I'm gonna be biased towards the Sony system just because that's what I'm used to. But like I said, I'm gonna to have to give a really deep dive with X-T3 um, for the next couple of months and then get X-T4 and even you know, make sure that I actually work with it and try to use it to the best of my ability and determine if you know, it's a system I'd like to go go with for my video work. Again, I'm still keeping all, uh, you know, all my Sony lenses, my Sony, my, the Sony bodies, except for a couple I'll probably sell off just to make room. But um, yeah, like, let me know what you think. If you wanna continue to see my content and my journey with the system and see how it's like, uh, please give me a subscribe. Uh, that'd be very much appreciated. And until next time, is it in focus? Lighten up.